Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to talk about how to unsharpen over sharpen edges. While sharpness can be a good thing, over sharpening can give away a videoish look. It can often be more problematic further into the grading. This is why it is a good idea to start your grading process by reducing the unwanted sharpening. This shot was made with a Mavic and often with drone and action camera footage, you will get halos around the edges. Like here and here. This is due to the internal sharpening process of those cameras that compensate a lack of actual sharpness by exaggerating the contrast around the edges, giving you the sensation of watching a sharper image. Some would use the bit tone details to improve those edges, and while this is somehow working, you get rid of a lot of textures in those areas and introduce an overall softness. So unless you're looking for this particular look, I wouldn't recommend this approach. Joey Dana from MixingLike.com actually display in a recent article how to better tackle this issue, and I will link his tutorial in the description for more detail. Using a separate node, he's able to use the sharpen edges effect to create a matte, a black and white matte, which is highly customizable, as you can choose how much edges are detected, and you can choose how much blur is applied to this matte. This matte is then feed into the key input of this third node, which used to blur those selected edges. This is the before, and this is the after. So you can see get rid of a lot of those unwanted halos around the edges, but barely attack the texture on the floor and those bricks. But while this technique gives you a great amount of customization and great results, it is only reserved for the studio version of Resolve, unlike the technique that I'm going to show you. As you can see, this last approach allows me to get rid of those unwanted over sharpened edges without affecting the texture in the bricks and in the floor area. So let's create it in a new version. Let's start by creating a serial node and a layer node, giving myself some extra space here. On the bottom part, let's add another node. Change the blending mode to overlay. Back to the first node. First, I'm going to highlight it, pressing Shift H. Then I'm going to apply the invert color LUT and reduce the key output gain by 50%. As you can see in the waveform, I'm flattening the image to a 50% gray. And this is due to the fact that applying the opposite of itself halfway will actually average the image to 50% gray. Because the overlay blending mode subtract what is under 50% and add what is over 50%, our 50% gray image isn't doing anything overall. But now, if we actually blur this first node, edges start to appear. And this is going to be more obvious in this second image. Here I have an image with the same node tree applied. There is a light gray circle in the middle surrounded by a darker gray. If I highlight this first node and start to blur, I am creating a lighter halo where the light gray was and a darker halo where the darker gray was. We're actually creating a high pass filter as blurring the inverted image will let bleed through opposite tonality, especially around the edges where the local tonality differences are the greatest. Back to our drone footage, we can see that blurring this first node is actually resulting in accentuating those over sharpened edges. But now we found this circle image, instead of blurring this first node, I am sharpening this first node. I'm getting a darker halo where I used to have a lighter halo, and a lighter halo where I used to have a darker halo. And on our drone footage, this result in a compensating effect that reduces the exaggerated contrast around those edges. In full screen, I can see the before and after. Before and after. Furthermore, we can use this first node to control the radius of our filter. And this second node, making sure the pivot is at 0.5, will let us use the contrast to control the intensity of the effect. We should then compound this node tree and save it as a power grade. Ideally, this should be applied at the beginning of our node tree, before doing any grading, as this will allow us not to make those nasty edges even worse. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Stay tuned for more and thank you very much.